Welcome to today's Walk With History. Did the outcome of the Civil War really hinge on a lawyer from Erie, Pennsylvania? On today's Walk With History, we're gonna answer that question. Join me today as we learn all about Strong Vincent, a lawyer from Erie, Pennsylvania. Strong Vincent was born June 17, 1837. He was born in Waterford, PA, in his grandfather's home in Waterford. His grandfather was a judge, and he was born to B.B. Vincent and Sarah Ann Strong. And that's where he got his name, Strong Vincent, with his mother's maiden name. His father is actually one of the first people to establish Erie Insurance. Uh, it started as the Erie Insurance Fire Company, so now today it's Erie Insurance, and it's worldwide. So you probably even see Erie Insurance in whatever town you're from. He's the oldest of six. He gets an early education in Erie. He spent two years at his father's iron business. And then he goes on to Trinity College. And it's a Trinity College where he meets his wife, Elizabeth. And he's dating Elizabeth and her honor is impugned by another student there. Shoot him, daddy. Shoot him at once. Why? My honor is at stake. Well, now, your honor. Absolutely. He impugned my honor. Impugned? What does that mean? Slander. He slandered my honor. He did? I said what I said, and I'll stand by it to the death. He admits it, see? And Strong Vincent defends her honor, and he defends her honor in a way where he actually ends up physically assaulting the gentleman that impugned his girlfriend's honor and he's expelled from Trinity College. Hey! But Strong Vincent doesn't take it too hard. He goes to Harvard and gets his law degree from Harvard instead. How do you like their maps? So after Strong Vincent graduates from law school in 1859, he returns to Erie to read the law, learn the law, and he works at William S. Lane's law firm. So we were driving down the road looking for the law office of Strong Vincent, and we just pulled off to the side, and here it was, right on West 6th Street in Erie. So this is um, the building that Strong Vincent actually practiced law before he signed up and went into the, the Civil War. So it's 235 Wright House. It's behind me. So those are the steps. I'll go up the steps so you can get a better view. I don't know if it's in use right now. It looks like it is. Built in 1855. That's what it says over here. It was just random that we found it, but it's great that we did. So we can get an idea of the timeline of this gentleman's life. And the house still stands today. So I imagine it looks the same relatively as when Strong Vincent actually worked there. After Strong Vincent has been practicing law in Erie, Pennsylvania, the Civil War breaks out in 1861. This is about April, and he's been practicing law now for two years, but he promptly joins the military. He joins the Union. He marries Elizabeth, and he joins the 83rd Pennsylvania. The 83rd Pennsylvania is considered the Mud Turtles. They have been in almost every major conflict in America, starting with the American Revolution. He becomes the second in command. He becomes the lieutenant colonel of the 83rd Pennsylvania. In the spring of 1963, he is commanding a brigade of about 1,300 men, and he marches them towards Gettysburg. And as they, as they reach Gettysburg, he has some foreboding. He says, what death more glorious can any man desire than to die on the soil of old Pennsylvania fighting for that flag, as he's pointing to the American flag. So he knows this is going to be a major conflict is coming up and he's ready to give us all. By this point, it's July 2nd. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon and we have 
the generals trying to hold the line to keep the rebels from passing Devil's Den up to Little Round Top. And they're trying to fill these holes with troops. Vincent said, I'll take the responsibility of taking my brigade there. The slopes go pretty much straight up. If you've ever been to Little Round Top, it goes pretty much slopes straight up. The movie doesn't really show it. He went down, selected a position for the brigade, and he had the 44th of New York, the 16th of Michigan, the, the 83rd, which is what he was in charge of, of Pennsylvania, and the 20th of Maine. This is why he's so instrumental. You are the extreme left of the Union Army. Understood? The line runs all the way from here back to Cemetery Hill, but it ends here. Understood. You cannot withdraw under any condition. If you go, this line will be flanked. Fun fact is I love movies and Gettysburg actually features Strong Vincent in it. And it's actually played by Maxwell Caulfield, plays Michael Carrington in Grease 2. And Grease 2 is also one of my favorite movies. If you go, the enemy will sweep up over the hillside and take this entire army from the rear. You must defend this place to the last. Yes, sir. Now we'll see how professors fight. He emphasizes the importance of this position to the other people in charge. You cannot give an inch. We have got to hold this position. This is a strategic location in Gettysburg. And if we can hold this line, we'll give time for reinforcements to get here as well. Chamberlain gets a lot of recognition for his um, bayonet charge that he does at the end of Little Round Top, which is rightfully so, because that's a very brave thing to do. Charge! Left wing, right wheel. Right wheel! Charge. Charge! But it's Vincent who inspires Chamberlain to hold that position at all costs. It's Vincent who has that forethought and sees the bigger picture. And he's able to inspire his men to hold it, that position. And that's where he raises the riding crop and tells them he's out there in front with his brigade and says, don't give him an inch, boys. Don't give him an inch. That's his famous line with the riding crop that his wife gave him as a gift. And after that, unfortunately, he shot through the leg. But his men stand their ground and Chamberlain stands his ground. And in the end, they hold Little Round Top. It's such a strategic position for me to get there in time to reinforce the troops and the rebels are never able to overcome them. And Gettysburg ends up being the turning point of the Civil War. It ends up getting the momentum for the Union to win. And so can you say all of it hinged on a lawyer from Erie, Pennsylvania? You can make that argument. But Strong Vincent is a name everybody should know. Strong Vincent is a person everyone should know, especially when you study the Civil War. Strong Vincent, as he's holding the riding crop, given to him by his wife, is shot in the leg. He lingers for five days. He's in excruciating pain. But it is at this time that General Meade recommends him for promotion to Brigadier General. So Vincent actually knows that he's been promoted to Brigadier General. He, however, dies of his injuries on July 7th. He dies weak. He is um, muttering the Lord's Prayer as he passes away. He's buried in Erie Cemetery in his family plot. He's buried beside his daughter and beside his wife and his brothers and sisters and his parents. So you see there's, um, you see there's two stars here by his headstone that say GAR. GAR stands for Grand Army Republic. And it was the membership of people who had fought in the Civil War. It was the first military membership club after the Civil War. If the Civil War was over and you had served in the Civil War, you could join 
the Gar. And so that's these two stars here, 1861-1865 Gar, that's what it stands for. It's the veteran organization of the Civil War. 50th Memorial Anniversary. Don't give them an inch, boys. Don't give them an inch. July 7th, 1863 to July 7th, 2013. So this is 150 Memorial Medal. So look at, there's a lot of coins around the gravestone. You can see them. There's pennies, there's um, some dimes. So usually military members will, or people who just want to remember, you'll see this at Arlington as well, will leave coins on military members' graves. And a penny, I think, means that you were also in the military. I think a nickel means that you served at the same time. A dime means you served in the same regiment. And a quarter means you were there when they were um, killed. So you'll see that at Arlington. And there's a bunch of coins here. So I'm going to leave a flag as well as a fellow veteran and Pennsylvanian. Somebody who's proud to, to know a fellow Pennsylvanian uh, gave his life in honor of the country. I hope you enjoyed this walk with history. I hope you learned something about an American hero. I hope you will remember Strong Vincent when you think of the Civil War. That doesn't matter now. The only thing that matters is that I love you. And you're the only one who can keep our love alive. So Stephanie, don't forget me. I promise. Now we'll see how professors fight. If you're ever in Erie, I hope you see his statue. If you're ever in Gettysburg, I hope you see his statue. And I hope we just took a moment to remember somebody who really went above and beyond and found the inner fortitude to find some heroism to change the course of history. Thank you and join me again for Walk With History.